Most people think the self-driving race is already over. They see robot access on public roads and assume the winner has been decided. But what if the company everyone thinks is ahead is actually falling behind? In 2026, one single decision could erase years of progress, wipe entire fleets off the map, and leave only one player standing. This isn't about who launched first. It's about who can survive when scale, cost, and real-world performance collide. And once you see what's really happening behind the scenes, you'll understand why some leaders may not even make it to the finish line. For more than a decade, Waymo has been seen as the gold standard of self-driving technology. They were early. They had funding. And they were first to put robot access on public roads. But longevity doesn't always mean superiority. Despite over 10 years of testing, Waymo's vehicles are still making mistakes that shouldn't happen at this stage. Drifting over lane markings. Crossing double yellow lines. Entering the wrong lane entirely. These aren't edge cases. These are basic driving errors. In some situations, the cars even activate the wrong turn signal, signaling left while turning right. That kind of confusion isn't just embarrassing. It's dangerous. Now imagine that behavior scaled to thousands of vehicles operating all day, every day. How many close calls would that create? And how many of those close calls would turn into something much worse? The uncomfortable truth is this. Being on the road first doesn't mean you're ready. And when it comes to self-driving technology, tolerating small mistakes today can lead to massive consequences tomorrow. But this problem runs deeper than a few bad maneuvers. The real issue with Waymo isn't just the mistakes you can see. It's the gap between what was promised and what actually exists. Back in late 2021, Waymo and Zika revealed an ambitious vision. A purpose-built robotaxi. No steering wheel. No pedals. No driver's seat at all. Passengers would step into a wide, open cabin designed entirely around autonomy. It wasn't just a car. It was supposed to be the future of transportation. Fast forward more than five years. That future still hasn't arrived. Every Waymo vehicle currently being tested on public roads looks nothing like that original vision. They still have a traditional steering wheel. They still have pedals. And they still rely on a layout built for a human driver. In fact, there isn't a single confirmed Waymo vehicle operating without a steering wheel today. Not one. That matters more than most people realize. Because removing the steering wheel isn't a cosmetic change. It's a legal, technical, and regulatory milestone. It means the company is confident enough in its system to fully remove human fallback. And Waymo isn't there yet. What makes this more concerning is the timeline. The concept was announced years ago, yet the real-world test vehicles haven't moved any closer to that final form. No gradual transition. No visible progression. Just the same safety-first prototypes running in controlled environments. Meanwhile, public expectations keep rising. Autonomy isn't being judged against yesterday's standards anymore. It's being judged against what's about to launch next. And when a company spends half a decade stuck between concept art and reality, it raises an uncomfortable question. Is the technology still evolving? Or is it being quietly boxed in by its own limitations? Because in this race, staying still is the same as falling behind. And while Waymo remains stuck in the concept phase, another company took a completely different path. While Waymo continues refining controlled experiments, Tesla quietly shifted the entire conversation from promises to proof. Without flashy announcements or long timelines, Tesla's Robotaxi program began doing something far more dangerous to competitors, operating in the real world. On public roads, in live traffic, with no safety driver actively controlling the vehicle. At first glance, Tesla's fleet size doesn't look impressive. The number of deployed vehicles is still relatively small compared to what many expected. But focusing on vehicle count completely misses the point. What actually matters is exposure. In less than six months, Tesla's autonomous fleet has already logged hundreds of thousands of real-world miles across complex urban environments like Austin and the San Francisco Bay Area. That's not simulation data. That's not controlled testing. That's unpredictable traffic, human behavior, construction zones, and edge cases happening in real time. What makes this even more striking is how these vehicles behave. They don't rely on pre-mapped routes or constant connectivity to external systems. They adapt. They navigate apartment complexes, enter and exit parking structures, respond to unexpected obstacles, 
and make judgment calls in situations that don't exist in training manuals. These are the exact scenarios where autonomy usually breaks down, yet Tesla's system continues to improve through exposure rather than restriction. And this is where the gap between Tesla and everyone else starts to widen rapidly. Every mile driven doesn't just move a car from point A to point B. It feeds the system. Each interaction, each near miss, each awkward human decision becomes training data. Compounded across a fleet, this creates an accelerating feedback loop that's nearly impossible to replicate with small-scale testing or heavily geofenced operations. Critically, Tesla didn't wait for perfection before deploying. Instead, it designed a system capable of learning under real-world pressure while keeping deployments limited enough to control risk. That balance is rare. And it's why, despite operating for a fraction of the time, Tesla's autonomy stack now shows behaviors that competitors with years of testing still struggle to achieve. This isn't about being reckless. It's about confidence in architecture. When a system is built to handle uncertainty, every mile strengthens it. And once that learning curve steepens, catching up becomes exponentially harder. Because when autonomy starts improving faster than regulation, manufacturing, and competition combined, the race stops being close. Now, put yourself in the passenger seat. No steering wheel in front of you. No pedals. No human backup. Just software making every decision at speed. In that moment, what would make you feel safer? A system that memorized the road. Or a system that understands it. This is where the philosophical split in autonomy becomes impossible to ignore. Some companies build cars that follow the world as it was mapped yesterday. Others build cars that learn the world as it is right now. When a vehicle depends on high-definition maps and constant connectivity, it works beautifully until something changes. A blocked lane. A missing sign. A delivery truck parked where it shouldn't be. Suddenly, the system hesitates. It second guesses. It waits. And hesitation on public roads isn't caution. It's risk. Tesla's approach flips that logic entirely. Instead of asking the car to remember every road, it asks the car to reason, to interpret, to make decisions the way a human would, but without fatigue, distraction, or emotion. That difference doesn't show up in marketing demos. It shows up when something goes wrong. Ask yourself this. If two autonomous cars encounter a situation they've never seen before, which one would you trust more? The one trained to follow rules or the one trained to understand intent. This isn't just a technical debate. It's a trust problem. Because autonomy isn't proven when everything goes right. It's proven in the moments when the system has to decide without a script. And once you start looking at autonomy through that lens, the gap between working demos and real intelligence becomes impossible to unsee. And that realization leads directly to the part of this story most people overlook. At some point, Every technology race stops being about innovation and turns into a math problem. Not hype. Not demos. Not headlines. Just numbers that either work or don't. Ask yourself this. What happens when autonomy finally works, but costs too much to scale? This is where the gap between Tesla and its competitors becomes brutal. Waymo's vehicles are engineering marvels, but they come at a price that quietly limits everything else. Estimates place each unit at around $200,000. That's before maintenance, sensor replacements, downtime, and fleet management costs are even considered. Now compare that to Tesla's plan. A purpose-built robotaxi designed from the ground up for mass production. No steering wheel. No pedals. No unnecessary complexity. A target price below $30,000 at scale. That single difference changes everything. Because when a vehicle costs $200,000, Every mistake matters. Every scrape, every sensor failure, every day offline eats into margins. Expansion becomes cautious. Growth becomes slow. Risk becomes unacceptable. But when a vehicle is designed to be cheap, durable, and replaceable, the strategy flips. You don't protect the fleet. You scale it. You don't avoid real-world exposure. You lean into it. Tesla's manufacturing advantage isn't just about factories. It's about philosophy. Gigafactories aren't built to impress investors. They're built to remove friction. Fewer parts. Faster assembly. Designs that get simpler with time instead of more complex. And scale changes how mistakes are treated. At low volume, errors are failures. At high volume, errors become data. That's the uncomfortable truth most people miss. 
The company that can afford to fail small can learn faster than the company that has to be perfect every time. So the real question isn't whether autonomous vehicles work. It's which company can afford to let them learn. Because when autonomy meets manufacturing reality, only one of those models survives. And once you understand that, the rest of the outcome starts to feel inevitable. So when you strip away the hype, the headlines, and the early demos, the outcome starts to look very different. This race was never about who arrived first. It was about who designed a system that could survive reality. Autonomy doesn't fail all at once. It fails quietly, at scale, when costs rise, learning slows, and progress becomes too expensive to continue. Tesla didn't just build a robotaxi. It built a manufacturing and data engine that feeds on real-world complexity. And once that engine reaches full speed, catching up won't be difficult. It will be impossible. 2026 won't be remembered as the year autonomous vehicles appeared. It will be remembered as the year the market chose its winner. The only question left is simple. When that moment arrives, who will still be standing?